ಆತ್ಮೇವಂಷತ್ಯಾತ್ಮನಾತ್ಮಾಂಡ್ಯೋಕಪರಿಷತ್ ಸಮಾಪ್ತ ಭದ್ರಂಕರ್ಣೇಭಿಶೃಣುಯಾ ಭದ್ರಂ ಪಶ್ಯಮಾಕ್ಷಭಿರ್ಯಜತ್ರೈರಂಗೈಸ್ತುಷ್ಟುಭಾಗು ಸತ್ತನೂಭಿ ವ್ಯಷೇಮ ದೇವಹಿತೈಯದಾಯು ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನ ಇಂದ್ರೋ ವೃದ್ಧಶವಾ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನ ಪೂಷಾ ವಿಶ್ವೇದ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನಸ್ತಾಕ್ಷೋ ಅರಿಷ್ಟನೇಮಿ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನೋ ಬೃಹಸ್ಪತಿರ್ದಾತು ಶಾಂತಿಶಾಂತಿಶಾಂತಿ why these sessions are mondo kupanishad we all encounter conflicts in life fear of death and stress and quest for happiness search for reality what is the meaning of this life we all take birth we live and we get educated probably get a job get married produce children we become old one day we die is it all to life or is there something more meaningful is there a meaning to this life these are the questions that bewilder us and conflict one ethics with another ethics one duty with another duty duty versus ethics why ethics why duty all these things have no solutions in any text except here in the upanishads and in the bhagavad gita they need higher dimensions of understanding the subtle dimensions which are put forth there solutions are found in the message of vedas including upanishads in general and mandak upanishad in particular you are all familiar with vedas and the ones that they encode the upanishad vedas are the knowledge base of the east coming from the word vidagnane vedas tell that is the treasure house of knowledge that we have so vidar vedas do not have a beginning according to our shastra they contain eternal spiritual laws discovered by the phases no human author attributed to the vedas called shruti are heard during meditation subsequent texts like puranas mahabharata ramayana etc called smritis created by human being religion and philosophy of vedas called sanatana dharma the vedas have been preserved all this years starting from the beginning the people date it as 5000 years now more and more people are coming to understand it is 10000 15000 whatever how they are preserved that preserved by a very special vedic chanting technology that's called pada krama jata and ghana this is based on the principle of redundancy that is repetition repetition we know that when the nasa launched their rocket first time everything was well planned and it started going towards the moon suddenly a meteor came and hit so the rocket started then collapsed this was not taken care of in the production so what they are doing in the next series of experiment they put small rockets so when a meteor hits when the main rocket start moving they launch the small rocket to bring the thing back to the entire thing then in the second experiments when it was all going rightly the engine main engine collapsed so there was again a failure 
So how did they do this? They added one more engine to the rocket. If one engine fails, another engine will come into the picture. Therefore, redundancy is to have the second and the third and the fourth. In our human system, we have two eyes. Why we should not have only one eye? We have two nostrils, two lungs, and so on, two kidneys. So redundancy is built into our system to bring about the exactness, not to lose the things. Similarly, the Vedic chanting, when it is done, in the Pada, it's only once every thing is done. But in Krama, you are going to repeat each word two times, front and back, front and back. Then Jata has three times repetition. Jata has put eight times. Therefore, the possibility of wrong thing happening becomes very less. All of you are familiar with the four Vedas, Rig Veda, Ajir Veda, Swam Veda and Atharva Veda. But there is other classification called Uttara Mimamsa and Pura Mimamsa. Pura Mimamsa, I call the technology of the Vedas. Karma Kanda and Upasana Kanda form the basis of the Pura Mimamsa. What do they contain? Rituals, Yagnas, Yagas, and Agnihotras and all of this. Today, all of you know that we are going to have nice Agnihotra in the evening. And you can all come, it's go online, and people can do this. Whereas in the Upasana Kanda, you have got our temple worship, Puja, Savan, Jignas, Upasana, all this thing. So, Purami Mamsa has these two dimensions which are put forth. Whereas the Gnanakarna or the Uttarami Mamsa deals with the science of the Vedas. They are all contained in the Upanishads. They form the Shruti Prasthana. And then we have the Shruti Prasthana in which they have been edited, put in the form of Bhagavad Gita and others. Yagnavarka Shruti, Manuspruti and so on. Then the basis of that through the Brahma Sutra, the theological dimension. Therefore, the trifold dimension, Kruti, Kruti, and Brahma Sutras, all these things. Kruti Prasthana, Kruti Prasthana, Nyaya Prasthana. Three Prasthanas form the basis of the Uttar Mimamsa. There are thousands of Upanishads. Among them, the most important is the ten Upanishads. Smallest among that is the Manduk Upanishad. Others put forth here, Ishakena Kathamdaka Mandukya, Taitriya Taitriya Prashna Chandogya Bhrudharanika. These are the ten Upanishads. What is the subject that are contained in the Upanishads? There are two main topics that are looked at. One is Sat for happiness, and there is quest for reality. Modern science also has this quest for reality. The methodology of science and the methodology of modern science, they are very much same. They match in most aspects. The goals of modern science and operation match in such for reality. Is there a fundamental reality from where this whole creation has been made? Has been the quest. But Uber has also dealt with the concept of happiness. What is this which you call as happiness and what are the things that we have to do at the main goal? While modern science investigated the world outside, Upanishads investigated inside. The modern science uses external labs and Upanishads use labs inside in a sense. We have got mind which is flexible, we can change dimension. <coughs> Modern science over 400 years has completed the investigations of the physical world and is moving to understand the subtle world beyond the physical. What is prana, what is mana, buddhi, chitta, hankara, is there something like consciousness, what is we call as gods and goddesses, devils and pishachas. Into this region of subtlety and causality, science is moving. While Upanishads completed this search, 
thousands and maybe millions of years back. We don't know. And all these things are available. So the first topic, search for reality, is the one that in the western part of our globe, it started about four centuries back with Newton and Descartes. So the scientific methodology was developed by first hypothesizing hydrogen plus oxygen comes water. You say, that's the hypothesis. Student comes, how it is possible, sir? Hydrogen is a gas, oxygen is a gas. How can you have water which is a fluid? He will ask. Questioning. Questioning is very important. Then the teacher says, okay, go to the lab and experiment yourself. So, how to design an experiment and conduct the experiment and he goes and brings hydrogen, brings oxygen, put them together, then no water comes. So he comes back to the teacher and teacher says, did you put H2O, two units of hydrogen, one unit of oxygen? Oh, I did not do that. He goes and learns the art of complete measurement. How to measure two units? What are the instruments? How to measure? Everything he learns and then puts it in. Again, no water. Again, he comes back, sir, I accurately did two units of hydrogen, one unit of oxygen, but no water came. What is it? Then he asks, how did you put them together? It is not mechanical mixing of gases. It should be electrolytically combined, he says. Then he goes, what is electricity? What is electrolytic combination? What is voltage, current, anode, cathode, everything he learns, little by little and maybe weeks and months together. Afterwards, put them together. Then when he gets the drops of water. So this is the process of experimentation, repeating these things, and so on. Then it has to be done in many places. It may happen for you, but somebody else when it is, it may not happen. Therefore, you should do that. He should also do that. And in different laboratories, different laboratories you have to do. It may happen in India. It may not happen in England. It may not happen in China. Wherever you do, you should get the reason. Then it will be established as an inference. Then it will go as a textbook. In a textbook, everything is done and established. This is what has to be done. This is the scientific methodology. So what we have understood, having done this experiment, we have understood everything in the physical world is nothing but the molecules. All molecules put together form this object. What are the molecules made of? They are all made of atoms. Atoms made of protons, neutrons, fundamental particles. What are they made of? They are made out of quarks, packets of energy. So everything in the physical world is nothing but energy, energy, energy. You can calculate how much of energy is in given matter. So E equals mc square, the equation that comes up. Then we also understood what are the laws that govern. When you study anatomy and physiology, anatomy means is the structure of the body. Physiology is how they function. Similarly, the world is made out of the energy. How do they function? What are the laws that govern them? The Newton's laws of motion, which you all have studied in high school days. That's for normal speeds. This is called as classical mechanics, also known as deterministic approach. Everything is determined. There is no ambiguity. If I leave an object, you know, after one second it is going to come down by 32 feet. If I launch a rocket to the moon, you can trace the entire trajectory to the moon accurately, mathematical precision. Therefore, it is called deterministic approach. But when you go understand these dimensions, the three laws which you can remember, a particle continues in a state of rest or uniform motion unless disturbed by an external force. This is the definition of force. Then, how do you calculate force? Force is proportional to mass and acceleration. And law three, action and reaction are equal and opposite. Remember all this. So given the force, mass and direction in the beginning, we can exactly fix the position and velocity of the particle anytime. The trajectory can be traced exactly. 
but when you put extremely high speed, like an electron filling around the nucleus nearing the velocity of light, then Newtonian mechanics will not hold. We have to go to the higher laws, quantum mechanics, probabilistic mechanics. What is the difference? If I leave an electron, it may come down, it may go up. It will go to the front, to the back, to the right or left. In fact, an electron develops like a globe. Therefore, you cannot say where will be the electron after one second. It may be here, it may be here, it may be there, it may be far away. Therefore, determinacy collapses once you go to the subtle thing. Therefore, you can only talk about probability. Probability of finding the electron here, 1%. Probability of finding electron in your pocket is 0.01%. Probability of finding electron far away there near the temple, maybe 0.001%. Percentage. Probability can be found. It's called the probability function called probabilistic mechanics. Therefore, we have understood everything about the physical world. The laws of transformation called classical mechanics and quantum mechanics. So, similarly, we have understood the gene expressions to gene transformations in our body. We are trying to do that. So, our knowledge base is complete about the physical world. Therefore, anything physical, we have been a big success. Putting man on the moon, building skyscrapers, underwater tunnels, information technology, sophisticated surgery, infectious contagious diseases, pollution, everything, we have been able to achieve this thing. So, complete success in the physical world, we have been able to achieve. We have been able to condense the whole globe into a small village. I am talking to people all over the world. Infectious and contagious, sophisticated surgery, all these things have been done. Therefore, modern science has understood the structure of the physical universe e equals mc square and the laws that govern them. Now what is happening to science? It is in a turning point to go beyond the physical, to understand the subtler and causal dimensions of the universe. This is what Fritz of Copra wrote in his beautiful book, Turning Point. How many of you have read this? Any of you have read Fritz of Copra? During this period, you go to the lab, take this book, very good book, 250 pages, and read that. And beautifully he has summarized all that has happened in science from the time its origin, 400 years back, and how it developed little by little, little by little, little by little, how we understood the physical world, you know, how we understood the laws that govern them, what are the changes that occurred, what are the technology that came up, everything he had beautifully described. Then he says, now you have to go beyond the physical. Is there something like prana? What is that that we call as mind, manas, buddhi, chitta, ahankara, emotions? Into this region of certainty we have to go beyond. He told all the scientists, don't think that you have reached the ultimate goal of finding the reality. I won't describe the surface. If it took 400 years to understand all these things, it may take millions of years, who knows? So, therefore, our knowledge base about the complete universe is very, very minimal. It's in an embryonic state, he says. So, this is what Prince of Copra has written in the book, Turning Point. And therefore, the biggest of the scientists, even Nobel laureates like Professor Josephson, Professor Josephson got, Charles, put the charger. Here, take my charger. The other thing is there. Professor Josephson's. My bag is not there. Okay. Get it from Tarangani if it is not here. An interesting thing happened. You know, I was in Cambridge University long back, maybe about 20 years back. Then I was giving a talk on Upanishads. Then Professor Josephson also came. Then he called me to his house for a cup of tea or coffee, whatever. Then he asked me what I can take when sitting there. See, I don't take coffee or tea. 
therefore, what you can take some juice or water will do. So he went inside. Then I started looking at a big hall like this thing, and there are a large number of books. Big library he has. I started looking at physics, mathematics, chemistry, quantum mechanics, all beautiful books, everything loaded. Then I start coming this side. It was all in Sanskrit, Bhagavad Gita, Upanishads, Ramayana, Mahabharata, Vedas, all lined up here, this side. And very nice books, you know, beautifully bound books. So when he came back, they asked, hey, I can understand all these books are there, but why you are keeping these books? Some people keep nice books for show, you know. Are you keeping this for show? Hey, uh, they no, no. I started studying some schools, Vedic chanting, everything, and I believe that these are the ones that give me direction to go beyond quantum physics. So wherever he is to go, he is to talk about the Upanishads. The question is, how our Upanishads can give the directions? How do the Upanishads give the direction to such great scientists as Nobel laureates? They are considered to be topmost. This story, all of you have heard? Anybody has heard this story or not? Raise the hand, those who have heard. Okay. Therefore, I don't have to go to this story. I will go to the end. So, what does that tell for wife's story? It tells that we all have this physical body. That's our fourth wife. And who is the third wife? Hmm? Your property, your wealth, you know, all that thing is there. Very, very attractive. Then who is the second wife? Hmm? Our family and friends who come always to help us. And who is the first wife? Hmm? Our individual soul called Jivatma. So therefore, in the story, he said, start looking inwards and normally we don't
penetrating is called Atman, that self. And the self of all of us. Therefore, it's called Paramatman. It's also called as Brahman. Brahman means ultimate reality, the reality of the whole creation or universe. So, this is the conclusion of the operations. The body, which is in a continual flux of changes, and the unchanging entity called self at the base of all the changing world. We are all changing. Even the body is changing. You know that every day billions has got created. The billions has got destroyed. By the time you came here, all our bodies have changed. And we have a new body. Every second we have a new body. What to talk about the mind, emotions, intellect, everything changing, 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 changing. That's the unchanging reality. And therefore, when we study the Upanishad, any Upanishad, we should recognize these three aspects brought out subtly in each Upanishad. So, the Upanishad should be looked at, understanding the reality, search for happiness in others. So, with this background, now we will start with the Mandoka Upanishad. First mantra. Om Ityeta Dakshara Midam Sarvam Om Ityeta Dakshara Midam Sarvam Tasyopavyakhyanam Bhutad Bhavad Bhavishyadite Sarvamukarayeva Om Iti Etat Aksharam Idam Om that is the akshara. Akshara means that which does not change. That is the ultimate reality. Idam sarvam. This entire thing that we see outside. The thing which we don't see. The entire creation is seen and unseen. Manifest and unmanifest. Everything is in there but pure consciousness. Om. Tasya upakhyanam. We are talking about this ultimate reality. Tasya Upakhyanam. What we are talking about in this Upanishad is about this Om. So, Bhutam Bhavat Bhavishyat. Yati Sarvam Omkara Eva. What has happened in the past? What is happening now? What is going to happen in the future? Everything is nothing but Omkara. Om. So, Omkar is the one that is beyond past, present, and future. It is beyond space, time, causation. Therefore, everything that is beyond this creation is Om. Not only that. Yacha Anyat Trikala Titam Tadapi Omkara Eva. Then what about this word which is changing? Is it something different? What you said is space, time, everything beyond that is pure consciousness every day. But what about this? This word which is ever changing? Tadapi Omkara Eva. That also is Omkara. In modern science, we have understood that everything physical is nothing but energy. You know. So what is that energy? Energy is that complete thing which pervades everything. Everything is energy, 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 energy. But in this you are not seeing energy. In this you are not seeing energy. So is it something else? At one time we thought these two are different. Energy is different from matter, we thought. You know. 
but later in science we understood that this matter and energy are same. You can convert matter into energy. Energy can be condensed back to matter. So we started developing these things. How the matter can be converted into energy? Nuclear energy, nuclear reactors, in which how to convert matter into energy, we understood. Similarly, how to convert energy into matter? Special equipment called cyclotrons. Cyclotrons were built. In Bhopal, we have cyclotron. In Delhi, we have a cyclotron. In which what we know, it's a huge equipment. You allow the energy to move continuously. Going up faster, 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 you go on increasing the speed very, very fast. When you are going to increase the speed to a certain level, then some energies get converted into particles. You can find new particles coming up. That is, energy can be converted into matter. So, these are the great innovations, understanding that we have today. Matter can be converted into energy, energy can be converted into matter. Therefore, what you see here is also energy. What is there is also energy. So, energy, matter, equivalence was found. Similarly, the Upanishad is telling. The letter home is all this. Of this, a clear exposition is started here. All that is past, present and future is verily warm. And whatever is beyond the three periods of time is also verily warm. Therefore, the OM is pure consciousness. And that is the one that is beyond space, time, causation. That is beyond Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vignan, Ananda Maya Koshas. That is beyond the world that we see, creation. Now we are all in this world. We all have these bodies. That which is beyond is Om. And then what about this which is there? Our matter, our physical world, our pranic world, all these things. That also is nothing but Om. Therefore, that it does not change which is that is Om and this also. What is that? Purna Madaha. That which is beyond is also Purna, infinite. Infinite power, infinite knowledge, infinite freedom, infinite bliss. That's our original state. Then we have this entire Jagat, Panchakoshas, which are there. So this also is Om. Just like that is also energy, this matter is also energy. This is energy, this energy. This everything is energy. Similarly, the entire energy, we have got electricity as energy, magnetic as energy, gravitation energy, various energy, that's all unseen. So everything is that with energy science has found. Similarly, our people have understood that everything, you know, in the creation and beyond is all energy, consciousness. That is represented as Om, Om, Om. Om iti etadaksharam maha. 
is called consciousness. Pure consciousness has been talked about in this entire Upanishad. Then what is the difference between energy and the womb? In science we have understood everything is energy. So here also it is telling it's all womb, nothing but beyond past, present, future. Is there a difference between energy and OM? There is consciousness. Yes. What is the difference? The difference is the energy that we talk about in science doesn't have consciousness, doesn't have the buddhi, doesn't have the freedom to change by itself. Whereas the consciousness has the capacity to change by itself. We all have the buddhi. You can raise the hand like this, or you can raise the hand here. You can sit like this, or you can sit in Padmasana. Or you can get up or walk. But can this do by itself? Can this table do by itself? This is energy. Then that's the concept. Soyameva pinatam yadi. Soyameva tanavam yadi. Said. Consciousness can condense itself. Consciousness can expand itself. Constant can move. Concept need not move. Concept can go very, very fast, you know, but beyond the speed of mind itself, or it need not move. It has complete freedom. Whereas the energy doesn't have any object, any energy, you have to bring the things. A matter, this thing remains in a state of rest or uniform motion unless it is driven by a force. So, it is this that differentiates the consciousness with the energy. So, don't get confused that consciousness and energy are same. Many people have this confusion. So, modern science has understood everything is like energy. This is what Upanishads is also telling that everything is energy, consciousness. No. Energy is only one small part of the entire spectrum of consciousness, under my question, matter physical world. Then we have the pranic world, the mind world, the intellectual world, and the dimension of bliss. Thing. Therefore, what characterizes this prana kosha is prana. Prana is the life. What is the difference between a dead body and a living body? The prana is here, prana is not there. What is the difference? Locomotion and replication. That a living entity can move by itself and it can reproduce by itself. A cell can reproduce by itself, cell can move by itself. Whereas a dead cell, a dead body doesn't have. Therefore, that is the difference between the prana and the dead body. Anamaya kosha, pranamaya kosha. Then we come to manomaya kosha. Not only it can move, it can think innovatively, we can think. The mind, innovation, creativity concentration, everything, the mind, you know. So, like that, we go on increasing. The freedom goes on increasing, increasing. When you come to the Manomaya Kosha, you can make this body very, very small, make this body very, very big. So, in Anamaya Kosha, when we are, we are not grown to that level, we cannot do that. When you use your yoga and get to that level of Manomaya, Vignanamaya Kosha, then you can do that. Harman was such a great person. Great yogi, great yoga master. What he did was able to just bring your body very, very small, make it very big. <coughs> How did he use that? You remember the story, Ramayana. Hanuman was jumping to go to Lanka. Then what happened? Big Rakshasi, Sursa came. You know? Sursa was staying there. And she blocked. Hanuman said, please, please allow me to go. I have come with a divine mission. No, 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 I will, I will eat you up, he said. So please don't do that, please allow me to go, allow me to go. Then she says, anyway, you have to go through my mouth, you have no choice. He said, okay, I will go through your mouth. what to do. Then what he did, he started becoming bigger and bigger, bigger, bigger. So she also raised her mouth, very, very huge, you know, and Hanuman was such big, you know, Sarasas, mouth also become very big. 
Suddenly what he did? What he did? You remember? He became very small and went to the mouth and went away. This is called anima and mahima. Anima means become very, very small. Mahima means very, very big. So use the mahama shakti and then use the anima. Become very small, went through the mouth and went away. This is the thing that happened. So at that level, you have a complete mastery like this thing. It can contract, it can move, it can not move, everything. It has complete freedom. Whereas energy doesn't have. So energy is only one small part of the entire spectrum of consciousness. That is the physical world. Then we have pranic world, the mind, emotions, intellect, bliss. All these things are there you know, completely. So all that is nothing but Om. Therefore, Om, Om, Om is our original state. And that's the one that manifests. So the goal of life is to realize that home and manifest that home, the power of home in our lives. With that, we we'll close today's session. And we we'll close with the Shanti Mantra. Sarve Bhavanta Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kasi Dukkha Bhavet Om Shanti 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 Now, if you have got any questions, you can spend a few minutes before we close. You people have any questions? You can ask. Hmm? Okay. Mm -hmm. You can go to the room.